four big names in supercars bringing in this segment of the program. And maybe another, in a few years' time, another big name might be joined. That could be the name of Gary Jacobson. Should he wrap up the Dunlop uh, Series Championship next weekend up in Sydney? Who knows what could be ahead of him? And he joins us on the line now for a chat. Good morning to you, Gary. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for coming on board. Really do appreciate it. Uh, exciting times for you, mate. You head into the seventh and final round of the 2016 Dunlop Supercar Series. With a lead in the championship, 166 points over Jack LeBrock and 300 points better than Paul Dumbrell. So, she was one would say, mate, it's nearly yours to lose. Yeah, yeah. I started off the year with a little bit of an underdog situation. But uh, being at Pro Drive, this was a great chance for me to be in a factory team and see how it performed well. And uh, this year's gone really, really great. Uh, I've had great support from everybody at, uh, at the race team and by my family and uh, just really keen to deliver for the last round of the championship and how it's been. It's just really been a consistent year for you and I suppose that's why that puts you on top of the championship with 1,516 points. Uh, qualifying position in the top four, an average qualifying position, top four every time you go out, an average finishing position in the top five. That's pretty good racing. Yeah, look, I've had a lot of support from uh, you know experienced drivers such as Mark Winterbottom throughout the year, and and my engineer David Patterson, they're, they're really experienced guys, so they're always keeping me calm. And uh, I've always had really good qualifying speed since I've been in this car, and uh, I, I guess I'm just I'm comfortable where I am at the moment. Gary, tell us about your journey through the Dunlop Series. Uh, you, you spent a year or two at Eccleston Motorsport, which is known as a, a great team. There's no doubt about it, but making the switch and going to pro drive the last couple of years, how much has that just lifted you and, and taken you to the next level? Yeah, I guess it, I've gone into a team where there's 60 full-time staff and everybody there, you know, whether they're working on the cars or in office administration, they're very experienced. So I've just learned so much and I'm uh, really fortunate to be part of that program now. Uh, pro drive racing's obviously had a lot of great drivers at the past that's been able to deliver good results and and that kind of brought in the pressure for this year for me to be delivering that pro drive kind of results that they expect uh and yeah it, it's been a great year full of great racing um i think that uh the year thus far has gone to plan so far but um obviously we're still one round to go there's plenty of preparation plenty of pre-brief meetings like we always have for each round uh, about you know what's in the data analysis of how to drive these cars fast and what's the expectation of the track conditions whether it's going to be hot raining or you know it, it could be anything at Sydney like we had rain last year and, and the year before it's been 40 degree heat so plenty of preparation goes into these teams and that's what's helped me be this consistent really. Jules, it's been you said it's been nearly the perfect year and it sort of has probably apart from Perth. What a fantastic yeah. start to the season you had with Clips or Phillip Island. And, you know, first and seconds and third it was all you got in those uh, five races from those two circuits. But then you get to Perth and you have a 24th and a 12th. What was going through your head at the end of Perth? Did you think, oh, God, don't tell me everything's just fallen away? Yeah, yeah that was an interesting round. It was something that was sort of beyond my control. I was hit off the track and, and Perth has these really big, deep sand traps that I got bogged in and I couldn't get past it. And then the next race, there wasn't really much racing because there was too much crashing and safety cars. So it's, I took a back step there at Perth, but I learned a lot from that event. I learned how to uh, manage my racing a little bit better and, and not take as many risks, which, you know, I think from what we're seeing at races at Sandown and stuff like that, but um, there was starting to be more crashes that I, that I wasn't involved in. And, uh, it just changed my strategy a bit. So whilst it was a bad round for me, I think that it, it framed me into a better race car driver and it prepared me for the remainder of the rounds of the year. Gee, was, uh, I would have thought the, the crowning jewel in the series so far, and I know that'll probably be the championship next week, but right up until this point in time, the fastest lap ever of Mount Panorama in a Dunlop series car, a 206.53, knocking 0.2 of a second off Paul Dumbrell's previous record. Not bad, mate. Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, when you mentioned that you, you're faster than anybody else that's ever been there in the Dunlop Series, it's, it's quite an awesome achievement and I'm very proud of that. And, you know, I've been teammates with Paul Dumbrell in the last two years, racing in similar car as he is, and then to go onto a different team and go faster than him, uh, faster than one of the best endurance drivers for Red Bull Racing, you know, it really puts me into uh, an exciting frame of mind for what, what's going to be in the future. Uh 
And, uh, yeah, I'm just really happy with where I am in this car at the moment. It's handling like an absolute dream. But, uh, yeah, to, to get pole position at Bathurst and then pole position the round before at Sandown where the endurance events were held, you know, those, those are the sort of places where I want to be a co-driver in the future. So to deliver at those tracks was awesome. Yeah, no doubt. And to work with a guy like Paul Dumbrell, as you said, one of the more experienced enduro drivers in the uh, Virgin Australia Supercar Series, but just an accomplished driver on his own in regards to what he achieved when he was driving full-time in the series. That must be such a benefit for you to, to, to see this bloke every week and chat to him about uh, a, a supercar. Yeah, yeah, and, and he's, a one ta- he's a wonderful character as well. Like, even though I don't race with him as a teammate this year, we still, you know, have, have good phone calls every now and then to catch up about how we're going. Uh, and, you know, the intensity when you have a teammate like that or Mark Winterbottom is so high after each session, you're looking at their data and comparing yourself to them. It doesn't matter if it's practice. Uh, you're still getting compared to these guys, and you need to be on your A game. Otherwise, if you don't deliver... Uh, and you look bad against one of these guys, you know, it can be harmful on your career. So whilst having these good teammates, it's also pushed me along the way to perform day in, day out. And, and that's not only in racing, it's through my training. We go on training camps together and, and you know, we, we do back, like meetings together and things like that. So every single time you're around these guys, it just pushes you to be a better race car driver and a better businessman and a better athlete. Jack LeBrock's a very driven boy himself. Uh, tell us about the relationship between you two guys as teammates. Yeah, it's been pretty good. I think considering that uh, we've been fighting up the front all year, it's been pretty pretty calm and uh, pretty civilised, which is which was surprising. You know, I thought that uh, we might have had something happen eventually during the year, given that it's a, a fierce competition and a yeah. fierce battle for the championship. But uh, I think we've both handled it quite professionally. Um, We've known each other since Formula Four days when we were both selected as two of the four rising star candidates for uh, uh, the Formula Four program. And and ever since then, we've sort of known each other and been racing against each other. But um, you look, I've got a lot of respect for him and I think he has for me as well. And uh, without one another, I don't think that we could have been the drivers we are today because uh, we've sort of pushed each other the whole way. And, and uh, it's been a really interesting story and a great battle. And mate, you've been really fortunate for this final round. You've had a couple of uh, new sponsors jump on board with you for uh, for the race. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Exidy has come on board, uh, one of the largest original equipment and aftermarket clutch manufacturers. And to have a global brand uh, sponsor me now is uh, has been fantastic. And I'm really happy to be an ambassador for that brand. And Ultra Air as well as, as a local company based in Sydney. And, uh, you know, with these guys, these guys' support, it's, it's a really promising future for me now and, and uh, really excited to deliver them back, you know, some great exposure being the championship uh, contender car for the Sydney 500. Uh, and I'll, I'll still talk in possibilities. Should you take the championship next week? Because uh, it's not a given, but uh, it, it's every chance that you probably will. What does the future hold for Gary Jacobson? Uh, I'm, I'm, you're going to get bored with Dunlop Series eventually, aren't you? Yeah, I think the Dunlop series has escalated year after year. Uh, I, I certainly have goals to be in the main game, but with goals, you need to make sure that uh, you have the funding available and, and you're in the right team at the right time. So I'll be, uh, I'll have a very, very busy, busy summer assessing my options. Uh, Dunlop series is no serious to frown upon. There's been repeat contenders in there for years, such as Paul Umbrell and, and many other drivers like Andrew Jones who have won the championship. Uh, but, you know... I think that uh, if you're going to be serious about supercars, main game needs to be your fundamental goal. And Dunlop Series has been a, a wonderful uh, preparation for that series. And uh, I can't wait to finally race against, you know, the top tier drivers such as Jamie Winkup and, and Craig Lowndes and, and obviously my teammates, Chaz Mustard, Mark Winterbottom. So you're right, that, that is a fundamental goal of mine and I can't wait to get there. So personally, though, do you know what you need to do to, to make that next step up? Yeah, I think it's just keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, eventually, uh, the doors will open. Uh, we've already been having conversations with, you know, many people amongst the business of their supercars. Uh, and I'll know shortly enough after summer's done. And, and uh, you know, while it's tempting to, to go and, and take the first opportunity, you need to be careful in this situation because, you know, you don't want to make it your... Uh, any bad decisions that could reflect badly on you and you and you want to be able to uh, make the most of any opportunity you get. So I'll know a lot more after the summer's done. Something I've been a massive proponent for for years, but it, it just seems to be falling on deaf ears at places. 
it seems silly that we have a development series and the winner of that development series doesn't automatically get an opportunity to try out for a major game seat. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think it would be great for Dunlop Series to maybe carve something that you know is an automatic entry uh, into the main game to give more incentive for drivers that are struggling with budgets and things like mm. that that are not quite all the way into the professional level yet getting lots of funding. I think it would be great to make a change to that. Um, and it'd be good to have have a bit of a say after the years done to see what we can do about that to make some changes for the sport to you know make it that little bit easier for younger drivers who are taking big risks to enter the Dunlop series to have that little bit more hope that they might be able to have their chance in the main game one day. Well, fingers crossed that's not too far away for you, mate. Thanks very much for your time, Gary. Really do appreciate it. And all the best up at Homebush next week as you look to wrap up your first V8 supercar or supercar uh, d- development series championship, and hopefully that's only uh, a week away. Thanks again, guys, and uh, hope everybody has a great Sunday back home.